Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many know that we're that God commands us to love? Amen. How many know that God commands us to care for those in need? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we He expects us to do whatever we can right. and whatever it takes to meet that need. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If we're to put our faith in action, Amen. amen. God has commanded us to love and care for all. Amen. Do you have it? Amen. In Luke chapter, amen, 10, starting with verse 25, amen, in your hearing. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? And he answered and said, you shall love the Lord God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and with all of your strength, and with all of your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, he came, he looked, and he passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Somebody say compassion. compassion. Verse 34, so he went to him, and he bandaged his wound, poured in the oil and the wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarius, and he gave to the innkeeper, and he said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So, which of these three do you think was neighbors to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. Amen. Go and do likewise. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this Amen. service today. Yes. We've been so inspired and touched yes. by the power of Almighty God. And I believe that you have a word for us at this, at this hour. Yes. And Father, Lord, we just pray that the word will fall upon the good ground that will open up our hearts and receive what you have for us. That we can have that hunger and that desire to draw closer to you and be a better Christian, better person. Amen. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As I stated before, we're commanded, brothers and sisters, to love and to care for all. You know what I'm saying? For all. Amen. And we're to, you know, to put our faith, we say we have faith in God, we need to put our faith uh, in, in action, into action. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. And we've just read the scripture out of Luke chapter 10. Amen. And this is a, a parable of the Good Samaritan. Amen. Amen. And it's probably pretty familiar, you're familiar with the story. Amen. But we want to look at this passage again. <coughs> and number one, we want to note the business of the religious. Number two, amen, we want to note the compassion, the compassion of the <coughs> Samaritan. First of all, amen, we can see in this passage that a man who had been robbed and left to die. We should assume from the context that this man, amen, perhaps was Jewish in nature. A priest and a Levite are walking down the road. But when they see the injured man, they passed over to the other side of the road. Can you believe it? Yes, but well, we read it in the scripture, right? 
Here is a man that's been stripped and robbed and need help. Amen. But the religious passed by. Now, as we read the scripture here, it tells us that Jesus was talking with a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Now, the law here does not mean law as we know it today. Mm -hmm. Law in that day meant a religious law. Mm -hmm. Jesus is telling the parable of the Good Samaritan to an expert. Mm -hmm. This is an expert right. in religious law. All right, then. We don't know if this man was a priest or if he was a Levite, but we do know that he was considered one who had lots of knowledge about the Old Testament or the law. He was an expert in the law. This is the man that came to Jesus. Now, Jesus tells the story and then asked the religious expert in verse 36, so which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves? Now this, of course, Jesus is asking a rhetorical question. Jesus did not ask the question to see if the man was paying attention. Jesus asked the question because the answer is obvious. The religious man who passed or the men who passed by the injured man, they were wrong according to the law. And he's uh, is telling the religious experts that religious experts are not as good as they think they are. Amen. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Yes. They're not as good as they think they are. Mm -hmm. Now, let us pause for a moment for a second and think about the reason why the religious men did not stop to help. Think about that. I know all kinds of reasons come into your mind and what you're thinking I'm proud to have for one of my points. Because I, I can think of three or I jotted down three reasons. First, it is because they were too busy. Too busy. Can you relate to that? Yes. Can we relate to that in a busy society in which we live? Yes. Think about it. Amen. And, you know, we're busy people nowadays and times. Amen? Amen? And we have important things to do. Mm -hmm. Boy, I mean, man, i come a little weak. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here he goes. Oh, uh, the smart you prayed in your prayer. Amen. The people are not getting mad if the, if the word is cut, right? Then you say, oh, me. That's all right. Amen. Uh, we're busy people. We have important things to do. Therefore, many of us do not take advantage of opportunity to show love to the lost and dying people. Yes, amen, amen, amen. Matter of fact, when we first got saved, we reached more people and witnessed to more people than we do now. Because you get locked in to certain groups, certain people of the world. And we have opportunity. We don't let our light shine too much. Because the fact is that we're around church folks all the time. And that doesn't mean you stay home from church. You come to celebrate. Amen. You come to celebrate the love of God and what you're doing. Amen. And how God is blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, oftentimes when we see a need or we're too busy, we hear statements like this. We justify it like this. Well, I just can't do everything. I'll leave it to somebody else to do. Or, I had to do something that I just could not reschedule. I just could not even be hindered. You see, these, these two religious men, the Levite, and the priest, mm -hmm. 
you know, they probably were busy. They probably were on their way to perform their duty. Well, I tell you, that argument just needs to be adjusted, doesn't it? I can see people fanning while it goes down and putting on the coat. I mean, I just don't know how to put it down, but it, it, I don't know what we need to do with it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. They, they perhaps go on their way to perform their religious duties. They go on their way to church. You see, they might have been on their way to perform a marriage or a funeral. I'm talking about the two religious men that crossed on the other side. Yeah. You see, they probably had pretty good excuses. Mm -hmm. But Jesus points out their foolishness. Come on now. Yeah. Jesus points this out. Right. In essence, if they did not help because they were too busy, mm -hmm. they were saying that they could not do really, really real God's work. Amen. 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 Because they were too busy to do God work. Right. Now, let me stop here and say we can look busy, mm -hmm. but are we really doing the work of the Lord? Those yeah, things that the matter. Oh, and I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. Relationships are high on the list of doing God's work. They've been sharing and witness to the lost and and, 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 and sharing and reaching out, amen, to those that are hurting. That's high on the list. Going into the jails and visiting, amen. Doing things and visiting the elderly, amen, the seniors, amen. Letting our light shine in the workplace, amen. Those things are high on the list, amen. amen. Oh, Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Amen. Oh, come on down, amen. <laughs> Do not ever, let me say this in this first point, do not ever miss the opportunity to help the needy. Amen. Amen. It's important. Amen. Yes, it Hallelujah. It's important. Nothing is more important. Amen. amen than responding and helping the needy. Amen. Now the second reason, amen, that these religious men might have not have helped. It's because they didn't know how to help. Mm -hmm. okay. Man, that, that's part of common. They, they may not knew how to help, but that's a, that's a poor excuse, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Amen. After all, you know, ministers are not trained in first aid, Sister Marshall. Is that right? <laughs> they try to have all of us to be trained on, in first aid. And, you know, we're, we're spiritual doctors, not physical ones, you know. Amen. You see, what if they'd gone to help and did not know what to do? You know, what if, what if this is the case? Well, listen, brothers and sisters. Don't let ever, you know, let this be an excuse for not doing something. Not doing something. Amen. You see, amen. These, these men, they could have done something. They could call 911 or something. Amen. I don't know where you're calling those days and time. Amen. Or else they went and prayed for the man or whatever. They should have seen him half alive and rather than half dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Go and console him and hold his hand. You know, he might have had some broken bones. I know that much. You're not supposed to sit the Pierre pick up anybody with broken bones, right? Let them play still, right? Amen. Well, they could have done that. They could have stayed and Amen. And did something. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, all those guys had to do was to stop. Oh, yes. Amen. And either call someone or take the guy that was beat up. Amen. And, he could, and call, take him to, to beat him. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's not a difficult thing to do. But, here's the key. It takes intentional effort. Amen. Just to say, well, you know, I'm not caught, but I don't know what to do. This. Look, brothers and sisters, God has placed responsibilities into our hands. Of the amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, glory. And we, amen, we may not know specifically what to do, but the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us. Hallelujah. We may not know what to do, but we feel conviction when
when we leave somebody that's in need. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you something. When we stop and pay attention, oh, yeah. when we stop and pay attention, uh -huh. amen, then, amen, we are able to minister in a miraculous way. Amen. To the situation. Amen. amen. Now, the third reason the religious men might not have intervened is because they just didn't care. Mm. Mm. Well, I hope this is not our case. Mm. Amen. Mm. We don't know for sure. No, we don't. What we do know for sure is that Jesus is telling mm -hmm. the religious leaders and men mm -hmm. to whom he's speaking to, he's telling them that they broke the law whether they cared or not. Mm -hmm. And he's telling them, amen, in this message today, that there are people, amen, they love to talk, do a lot of talking, yeah. even in the church, they like to do a lot of talking, spout off, oh, yeah. amen. But, and they know the scripture, uh -huh. amen. And they know, they love to tell what good things they do for God. But when it comes for time for them to do something, amen, and it requires them to get their hands dirty, come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. You see, amen. They, they do not get involved because they have to get out and get their hands dirty. Amen. You're doing all right. You're getting out of the way that. And anyway, I want, to note, I want you to note something here about the Samaritan. Mm -hmm. you heard the story before you know that Samaritans and the Jews they didn't necessarily get along together mm -hmm. they didn't get along the Jews would go around the city of Samaria amen the Samaritan would not go down to Jerusalem basically amen to the Jewish community they just didn't get along you see the, the Jews called the Samaritans half breeds half breed because they're married out of their race or their culture the Samaritans did and call them half breeds you see in other words the Samaritans were the only half Jews so the Jews discriminated against them so what Jesus was essentially telling the experts in the Religious laws was that a half breed, in the words, amen, one that they didn't consider a Jew, was better neighbor than they were. And they were of the Jewish religion, a Levite, amen, a priest, perhaps a Pharisee, amen. This half breed, if you want to put it that way, was a better neighbor than they were. Amen. And of course, this, when Jesus was telling, amen, this lawyer, amen, this expert this, don't you think that Jesus was using offensive language? Yeah. To him, yes. That would have been very offensive statement to a religious man. Or a Levite. Or a Pharisee. Oh, that would not have been in the day, vernacular, that would not have been what? What do you call it? Political. Correct. Political. Politically. Politically. Yeah, Poli politically correct. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But it was true. Amen. Come on, somebody. It was true. Oh, yeah. Amen. Over and over in Scripture, oh, no. Jesus points out that discrimination of any kind, this discrimination of any kind is wrong. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. We're all created by God. Amen. Hallelujah. And equal in the eyes of God. Amen. It doesn't matter where we are red, yellow, black, or white, or tan. See, we're all the same. doesn't matter if you're clean, dirty, smelly, good, bad, naked. Church 
accept the man, amen, and minister to him, amen, in a marvelous way. Now, I like this. In verse 33, the Samaritans had compassion. Uh -huh. Compassion. Oh, what a word. Compassion. Amen. You see, when the Samaritan came upon the injured man, he didn't see he didn't see Jew or Gentile. He saw a person that was in need. Oh, thank God. You see, he didn't see even an enemy. He did not see a particular color of a person. The Bible said that he had compassion. And look what he did. The first thing he did when he used his own, and this is important, he used his own possession to help the man. He just didn't find anything beside the road that didn't cost him anything. He used his own possession. God. To help the man. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 34, the Bible said that he bandaged the wound. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Now, I could be wrong, but I do not believe that they sold first aid kits <laughs> out of Walmart in those days. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the Samaritan probably did, you know, he did not have a package of sterile dogs. And some hydrogen peroxide to pour in the wound. Amen. He probably used some kind of cloth. Amen. It was probably cloth that he intended to use, some, you know, for something else. Amen. Hallelujah. Then binding the wound. And the Bible says he even used his own oil and his own wine. Oh, yes, my friend. Amen. This was the hydrogen peroxide, the wine that poured in. We talked about that the other night. Amen. Hallelujah. He probably had different, he had different plans for the oil and the wine. But he used it on the injured man because the man needed it. Somebody say the man needed it. Hallelujah. Let me ask you something, church. Would you be willing to give up possessions of yours? If someone needed it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, some of you are very generous in this church. Some of you, amen. It would come natural for you to do so. But others of you are kind of tight fisted. As long as, long, as long as it doesn't put you out, as long as it's not inconvenient, you're willing to help. Oh, Pastor, they're going to be mad at you. The bar? The bar, did you say amen on the bar? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, some of us would say this. You know, he probably, he probably deserved what he got. In other words, he, he, he's probably one of those drug dealers out there, old gang man. You know, lay on the side of the road, you know, you cross the wall. Come on now. You know I'm preaching good. I'm not going to waste my five dollars on me. I'm not going to waste my hard-earned money on me. No, he won't do nothing but go get another bottle of wine or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Lord. Amen. I'm going to save my money and my time to somebody who deserves it. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I heard some. I, I I I heard about something that was done last week, and I couldn't quit praising the Lord. Amen. After service, Amen. Last week, some one of our sisters became ill. She became sick. Tried to drive home. Amen. She was so sick. Perhaps it would have been. Amen. It would have been just a tragedy. Perhaps. Amen. Could have passed out behind the wheel. Yes. But we had some people, amen, amen that had compassion. Amen. We had some people that had some time. Amen. They didn't rush to the restaurant. They didn't rush home, amen, to get their own dinner. 
But they, amen, they say, listen, we'll take care of the situation. We'll follow you all the way home and make sure you get home safely. Or perhaps somebody would drive the car. Or perhaps, amen, after you get home, amen, if you feel like going to the doctor, whatever the situation is, we should not waste that opportunity to minister. Why? Because God will bless you in return. Over and above and beyond. Not only did he use his possession, but he also used his time. You hear what I'm saying? Time. In today's society, time is precious. Time is precious. We don't have time for nothing. He took the time to bandage the guy's wound. Then he put him on his animal, his donkey, took him to a place where he couldn't recover. Took him to the end. Amen. That took time. That took time. I'm here to tell you, church, are you willing to give up your time? Amen. You intended to use for something else to help somebody in need. Oh, God, there's a lot of, lot of hurting people in this world. There's a lot of hurting people in our own family. We must not cross over the other side. We must take advantage. God has placed us in a situation Amen. Lord Jesus, the man that had gone far and beyond. He just didn't leave him on the side of the road. He wanted to see him all the way through. All the way through. He got involved, amen, to finish the task. He used his own money to help the guy. Would you be willing to do that? Hallelujah. Before you answer that, Go with me to verses 36 and 37. Verses 36 and 37. So which of these three, this is Jesus talking, which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, he who shows mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, you're right. Go and do Likewise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the man of the law, of course, he replied, Amen. He who showed mercy on him. The man, Amen. He still didn't, he still didn't learn a complete lesson. He didn't even use the word Samaritan. He said, He who had mercy upon him. Amen. The Samaritan, the good Samaritan, the hag breed. Amen. The one, amen, could have easily crossed on the other side. But those of the church, those of the church looked at him and crossed on the other side because they were too busy. They were too busy. Amen. They wasn't able to invest. They wasn't able to even to look at the situation to see if they could make things better. Now, you may say, now, Pastor, what about all of these panhandlers that are out on the street? and on the road in Montgomery County and other counties. What about them? Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let your conscience be your God. If you're contributing in some kind of way to charity, if you're contributing, amen, to those that are less fortunate, amen, if you're contributing, amen, to those, amen, that are in need, you need not, amen, be guilty. But if you have some change, amen, and it's safe to do that, then there's nothing wrong with it. But they're saying now in Montgomery County, they're trying to set up a program that, that, that gets these, get the panhandlers off the street, get those that have needs off the street, and they can go to particular places and get what they need, and they're gonna let you know what you can, you can make a contribution to those places because I believe in a Rockwell Pike a couple of weeks ago somebody got killed or something. They were run over. Amen. Because they were asking for help. Amen. And if they did, if they, did, they ought to know better. 
I mean, I had to learn when I moved to this area, you don't dare go near the stream. Or <laughs> you'll get run over twice. Amen. If they don't do it the first time, they'll back up. Amen. I'm telling you, my friend. Amen. I know, ladies, amen, at night, somebody's out on the side of the road plumbing, and you don't pick any strangers up in your car. Amen. Because of the society at the time, well, the times were dangerous back then. But you have to use wisdom. I'm not saying be close enough to God that the Holy Spirit will direct you. Amen. When we're going on a trip and my wife is riding in the, in the, in the passenger seat in the front, amen, everybody she sees that needs help. On side, car stops on the side of the road, somebody fit, fixing a flat tire or somebody's asking for help, amen, oh, she just prays. God help them. Yeah. Help them get their car fixed. God, we go a couple more miles. God help them. Yeah. Lord God, for their car to get fixed. God help them, Lord. God help them get what they need, Lord. She's constantly praying. Amen. As we go down the street. I said, my Lord. I said, look, we're going to pray through before we get to our destination. Amen. Because she's praying. Amen. There's nothing wrong with the church reaching out. But when you have opportunity, amen, God places somebody along beside you and, and you have time and you feel like that God has an opportunity for you to help out and to reach out. Let me tell you, friend, amen, you can't outgive God. Amen. God sees. God sees. Well, they ain't saved, Pastor. I'm not talking about saved. They're made in the image of God. Amen. They're made in the likeness of God. And God expects you as a church to look out and have compassion. Have mercy. Amen. And to reach out and say, God, I don't know what you're going to do with it, but I'm going to obey the Lord. Amen. Let us stand together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. not to turn our back, not to look away, not to go into denial. There's a lot of people that need help out there, people in our own family. And I pray, God, that our heart will be open in Jesus' name. Here's what I want us to do, church. I always do this. I, I like to do this. After the message, Amen. I, I like for us to make a prayer of dedication and commitment that we would be more sensitive. Yes. Let me tell you something. Don't ever believe that Silver Spring is not a sensitive church, not a generous church. Amen. Because you, amen, you make yourself available in so many ways. But let us continue. Let us continue to lift up our eyes and see a Jesus. He saw the people in need. And he said, they're just like sheep without a shepherd. They're just going to and fro, bound by Satan and the devil. They have no idea that Christ said, I come to give you life and that you have it more abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. Saints, we're rich. Amen. Our eyes are open. The scales are from our eyes. Amen. We know that we belong to the family of God. I remember Sister Pierre that some of the research and information and some of you that have been to 80s know the average wages in Haiti is less than $2. $2 a week. Many of them they make mud pies and put a little something in the mud pile, a little oil, a little sugar. And sometimes they share that just to eat. <laughs> Pierre can pay you. Not only Haiti, but there are other oh, yes. third world countries. Yes, and perhaps we don't even have to look very far. Amen. And go down in the inner city of Baltimore and Washington, D.C. and find the same thing. New York, Philadelphia. What are you saying, Pastor? I 
I'm going to tell you, each local church, just about each local church, has a ministry yes. that reaches out. Reaches out to inner city. They reach it out to the third world countries. They reach it out to Haiti. They reach it out to other countries. Amen. In Central America. Amen. Different countries. Amen. I talk to Brother and Sister Venegas when they come in and have a little time to talk with them. They say, Pastor Kilby, said it breaks your heart to some of the travel, some of the poverty that they run into even in Central America, Latin countries. Said mothers taking, they have three or four kids, they're taking and just giving their kids away so they can be fed, yes. so that they can have a meal. Now, what are, what are you saying? Are you trying to put us on the gift truck? No, I'm saying this, brothers and sisters. And don't be tight fisted. Don't be tight fisted. When we're reaching out to missions, we're reaching out to help someone else, amen. Have compassion. Have mercy. But I'm saying, brothers and sisters, amen. Let us as a church have compassion. Compassion on one another. Let us take advantage of every opportunity. Amen. Because God will bless you. Amen. Look, you don't have to worry about it. As a, as a child, yes, you're going to manage well your, your money and in, in investment. You want to manage. You don't have to be fearful or afraid. You don't have to be fearful or afraid. God is going to take care of your need over and above and beyond what you could ever think. My wife, she gets Rose was here, she'll stand up and testify. She said, honey, she said, God has never let us down. She said, she said, each week you come home telling about some check you got. She said, I, it's amazing. It's amazing. People don't even attend this church. You go out to the mailbox or go, even here to the parsonage, open up the letters, there's a $500 check in there. $300, $400. And God has laid it on my heart. God's good. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah.